I'm Robert Landy, and um, I'm one of the handful of pioneers of drama therapy in the U.S., and uh, I founded the drama therapy program at New York University in the early 80s, and really started from scratch. There was no drama therapy in the United States at all. So um, you could say that, um, you know, I'm one of the inventors of the field. I studied, um, I have a doctorate in four fields, um, in primarily theater and psychology, but also in English and education. So the four fields combined, and um, I had a number of mentors from different fields, and I was able to, uh, when I wrote, when I did my research for my doctoral dissertation, I was able to put these fields together and come up with this, probably an, a very early understanding of drama therapy. I was a, certainly a student of psychodrama, and I knew Moreno's work very, very well. And I got to be very friendly with the Moreno family, and, uh, and went on from there. So I would say that you know, my major life's work has been uh, developing the profession of drama therapy as an academic discipline, as a clinical practice, as a research field, you know, the whole, the whole gamut from soup to nuts. <laughs> and I also, I've never stopped doing clinical practice. And at this point in my life, I just retired from the university. I will continue to do clinical practice in a modest way. And uh, I've spent a lot of my career as a writer. I wrote uh, many books about drama therapy and articles and all kinds of things. And I've sort of um, uh, let go of much, of much of that. I still write a monthly blog in the journal called Psychology Today, which is, which is a lot of fun. Primarily now, I am um, a maker of art. I'm a photographer and a visual artist. And I still do an international training in drama therapy. That's I'm here in Britain. I've been asked that question for 40 years nonstop, and I can't say I still know how to answer it in a way that makes sense to most people. I used to say that as a drama therapist, I help people tell their stories, and that seemed to satisfy a lot of people. Oh, help you, what kind of stories, you know, that kind of thing. And now I say, as a drama therapist, I do what any psychotherapist does. That is, I try to help people <clears throat> who are struggling with something in their lives get to a more satisfying place in their lives. But I do it rather than simply talking about it. I do it through a creative process um, where people play roles, tell stories, work with puppets. Um, become very playful and uh, often move quicker toward getting to the heart of the dilemma and moving toward a better place quicker than they would if they if they would just to talk about it for a long time. I think the work in drama therapy, mine among many others, um, proceeds in a very it, it's an indirect form of therapy, but it proceeds more directly toward the um, um, I'd say the heart of the matter and the uh, possibilities of change. I'd say the major impact was, uh, you know, creating an entire profession from scratch. Um, so um, I started in, like I said, in the very, very early 80s with nothing. And now it's quite a large international field. I've trained um, professionals all around the world. China, Japan, Korea, all throughout Europe, South America, Australia, you know, everywhere. And so uh, I'd say my greatest impact was as an educator and as a scholar, a writer. Um, my textbooks, my main books in drama therapy have been translated into about six different languages and they're used you know, I have three books translated into Chinese, and uh, I would say that's my major impact. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'd like to think that as a clinician, I've impacted the lives of clients over many, many, many years. Um, and from what I know of, of, you know, I've written case studies and so forth and stayed in touch with people having finished therapy, and I, I, I'd say the... Uh, the results are, are, are very heartening, you know. People have uh, moved on, and I've worked with 
gosh, just about everything, every kind of disability, mental illness, learning disabled, young people, children, uh, refugees, um, prisoners. I've done a lot of work with prisoners. And just recently I'm, I'm working with, uh, I've been doing some work with refugees from Syria and Afghanistan who are in the camps in uh, Greece. I'd say there are two obstacles. One is that the established mental health community, including at the highest level, physicians, psychiatrists, hospital administrations, uh, don't necessarily see or understand the value of drama therapy for several reasons. Number one, it's, it's, it's not well known in the mainstream. And, it, and two, it's not well known because there's not enough research out there. Certainly there's, not, there's very little, if no, if no evidence-based research. Which is, what, which is what leads programs to develop and w leads money to be spent on, on programs. And until that happens, I'm afraid the, the field is not gonna grow substantially. And I think it can happen, but it's gonna take a, younger generations to, to uh, develop the skills of, of, of research, empirical research and be able to do the research and have some evidence to say, this is how this works with this population, and I have some numbers to give you, people who make these decisions. So that's one thing, that's one great challenge. Um, the other great challenge is that we, you know, the times we live in, we live in times where not just in the United States, in the UK, I think all over the world, um, many governments are becoming more and more conservative and less tolerant of the arts as a form of education, as a form of entertainment, as a form of therapy, um, and more concerned with, you know, just b b developing political systems that support their point of view. So I think this, that means that there's going to be less funding, not only for therapies and mental health counseling and therapy, but specifically for the arts as a form of therapy. And so the political challenge is great. And I think the challenge of uh, recognition from established professionals in the mental health field is great without the research or literature behind it. That's a tough question. I, I don't know if drama therapy can make the world a safer place. I think what drama therapy can do is perform the world and hold it out for people to witness uh, from a distance and say, ah, this is the world we live in. This is what things look like, as opposed to journalists who do a wonderful job you know, uh, uh, bringing out all the uh, the really ch the challenges and the difficulties in the current world situa situation. But a drama therapist would do it differently, would put it on a stage, um, would put it in a fictional context, which is sometimes easier to take than just reading a, a piece of journalistic, an editorial written by a journalist. So I, I think that's, that's hopeful, but what, what I'm finding in my clinical practice is that a lot of people are coming in, uh, people who live with trauma. I work a lot with, with trauma. And a lot of people are coming in feeling re-traumatized by living in a situation of injustice and intolerance and are feeling really scared and really afraid and a feeling that you know the world is becoming very small and that they're marginalized more and more. So the therapy becomes, okay, let's explore these feelings. Let's see what you can do on a personal level or even on a, a community level, on a social level, to, to turn that around in any way you can. So the work becomes that. I mean, ultimately, I think any form of, of therapy, trauma therapy, psychoanalysis, be, you know, behavior, cognitive behavioral therapy, any form of therapy, is somewhat limited in what it can do on the more um, macro level, you know, on the broader community level. I mean, Moreno, J.L. Moreno, created this whole uh, notion of sociodrama where he put social issues on the stage 
and people engaged around in a discussion following the social, sociodrama. And I think it was rather successful and had an impactful, but I think it was most impactful in terms of preaching to the choir. I don't know if it changed the world in any broader way. I'm not sure if, if therapy can do that. I don't think so. Um, I think theater has done more of that at certain points, but I'm not sure if theater can change the world. I don't know what can change the world. Political process, yes, certainly. Uh, cycles, time passing, yes, I think more than most. Um, young people becoming activated and, and demanding uh, injustices to be rectified, yes. I think all these things are, are useful. But therapy, I think, is more, has to do more with an internal process, more than a social process. Uh, the, the strongest example I have of, of social change or group community change was right after 9-11 when New York City was uh, experiencing a lot of crisis and a lot of fear. Um, the New York Times gave, uh, I don't know, whatever it was, a million dollars to a bunch of arts organizations and asked the arts organizations to work with uh, groups of young people who were most affected by the, uh, the attacks. And one group uh, was chosen, was a uh, theater company, um, to work with a group of uh, I don't know, 10, 11 year olds who in their school saw the attacks through their classroom window. They saw the planes and the fire and everything and they were pretty freaked out. And so the theater group came to me, they, they felt they weren't equipped to deal with the psychological issues and said, can you as a drama therapist develop a program for the, for the children and also, and I said yes, and I said I'd like it to be more than just the children, I'd like it to be, to involve the school community and their parents, and in fact the community in which the school is situated. And so we did that, we, we, we worked for several months and we did this whole drama therapy experience and it, it, it turned into a, a community performance and the parents came and a lot of the local people in the community, and for the first time the older people had a forum to talk about their feelings, about what they experienced, and, and what they felt they needed to do in the aftermath of the attacks. And I thought that was very positive. And it had, it, again, it had, it had more of a political social effect. In, in countries that are less, in more traditional cultures, that are less, um, attached to models of Western psychotherapy and are suspicious of psychiatry and psychology and counseling and social work and so forth. Uh, some of those cultures tend to embrace um, less traditional forms of healing, such as drama therapy. So for example, I've spent a lot of time in Chinese culture, in China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, where they're really excited about drama therapy because it, it, it speaks to some certain traditions of, of puppetry, of, of, of healing through the arts, which, is, which are were common to you know, folk healing, to traditional forms of healing, uh, that are still very well uh, established in, uh, for example, Chinese culture, uh, Korean culture. Japanese, not as much, but to a certain extent. And so I see great opportunities in, um, in Asia and um, places like India, which I don't know as well, and I, I think there are not as many drama therapists from India who have been trained in, in the West. So that's where I see the, the, the opportunities and hope. I think also in Western Europe, I think a lot more countries, you know, theoretically drama therapy began in the UK and then in the US, and it, it, it was also in a smaller way in, in, in the Netherlands, um, there's evidence that it began in Russia at an earlier point, but it never fully developed. So I think in some of the more traditional cultures, there's more of an opportunity to, uh, to use drama therapy, to apply drama therapy to mental health issues and um, even social issues as a form of healing. So I, I, I'm, I'm very hopeful there. In the research area, I'm not as hopeful. I'd have to see that, and I'd have to see some of the training programs being more uh, specifically centered on, on teaching research skills. The latest work I've had before I left, the last, I don't know, five or six years before I left New York University, I developed a uh, part of our program 
in uh, therapeutic theater. And the idea was to have people who live with a certain condition in their lives, such as mental illness, such as a personality disorder, such as a, um, a you know, have, being part of um, the spectrum of, of autism or developmental disabilities, or being um, uh, dealing with uh, issues of race and gender and, and so forth, um, dramatize their, their life stories in front of an audience who needs to know, who has a, a great thirst to learn what it's like to live with a mental illness, what it's like to be racially compromised in, in, a, in a basically white world, what it's like to be gay or transgendered in a heteronormative world. And so we, we do these performances. Uh, they, they're often, they're always original, original works of, of drama, original plays. And they're performed by people who live with the conditions uh, to an audience of sometimes friends and, and you know, colleagues and so forth, parents. But also an audience of people who just need to know what does this mean? How does it affect me, who am not mentally ill, or who, who, are, who, who live in a perfectly hetero, heteronormative way? Uh, what is it like to be a transgendered person? What is it like? You know, so, so they see these things, and then they engage with the performers. And then the performers and graduate students do research around it and try to um, uncover what are some of the issues and how, how they can be uh, research further. And so the issues that come up come from the process of creating the performance and then the performance itself. So that's a whole concept that I developed, like I say, about six years ago. And, uh, you know, we call it therapeutic theater. And it, the, the name therapeutic theater is becoming very popular in the drama therapy world. It has many, many different meanings, but that's the specific one that, that we developed at NYU. I left the, uh, you know, full time work. Uh, before the advent of Donald Trump and, and, and the political situation that is in, in, with us now. And I would have liked to have worked more, on, w w more with that through therapeutic theater. But I'm sort of letting that go now. I'm, I'm, you know, other people are doing it now. But I, I started it. And it's a, it's a very, very powerful part of our program, which will go on hopefully for many, many years. Yeah. Thank you very You're much. You're very welcome. Thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure.